Atlantic hurricane season runs from June 1st to November 30th and peaks on September 10th. Some of the storms reach Category 3 or more, meaning they're major hurricanes. Most of the northern Atlantic Ocean Basin is at risk for these storms, directly or indirectly, but certain areas are more prone to be impacted than others. Why is this the case? Let's explore it. A hurricane, known by that in the Atlantic and Eastern Pacific Basin, is a type of tropical cyclone which is a powerful and destructive storm system that forms over warm ocean waters. During the Atlantic hurricane season, which runs from late spring to late fall, these storms develop over the warm waters of the Atlantic Ocean. But where they form varies throughout the season. Generally, in June and July, tropical waves form over the warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico, Caribbean Sea, and in the vicinity of the Bahamas in the Atlantic Ocean. For the most part, tropical waves that turn into tropical cyclones during this time of the year aren't that strong, with most of them reaching only tropical storm to weak hurricane statuses. By August, the rest of the Atlantic Ocean Basin warms, and this is when activity starts to increase. By late August into early September, ocean waters are at their warmest, with widespread tropical Atlantic Ocean temperatures in the 80s and even 90s in confined basins such as the Gulf of Mexico. The warm ocean waters give fuel to tropical waves for them to ultimately develop into tropical storms and eventually hurricanes if the conditions are favorable. Some of the storms during this time of the year reach Category 3, with sustained winds over 111 miles an hour. If the conditions are really favorable, storms may reach Category 5, with sustained winds over 155 miles an hour. A Category 5 storm can cause catastrophic damage from high winds and storm surge. During the Atlantic hurricane season, some geographical areas are more prone to direct impacts than others. But why? In this week's episode, we are going to discuss why these particular areas are more susceptible to hurricanes. Before we start, if you enjoy learning about geography and earth science, please subscribe to my channel, Our World, Our Planet, Our Home. It all begins with warm ocean water. Hurricanes are energy-hungry giants, and they feed on warm waters. When the sea surface temperatures reach at least 79 degrees Fahrenheit, it provides the heat and moisture needed for hurricane development. Throughout a good portion of the year, the confined Gulf of Mexico between Mexico and the southern United States is warm. Even at the beginning of the Atlantic hurricane season, temperatures within the Gulf were already in the 80s. Early tropical development happens quite a bit, and it's not uncommon for tropical cyclones to hit the Gulf Coast states in June and July. But when the Gulf of Mexico heats up further, this gives more fuel to these storms and tropical cyclones form more commonly between the months of August and October. One of the most notable hurricanes to strike the Gulf Coast was Hurricane Katrina in 2005, which reached Category 5 intensity with sustained winds of over 175 miles an hour and hit the Louisiana-Mississippi coastlines as a strong Category 3 storm with nearly 30 feet storm surge. Unfortunately, almost 2,000 people lost their lives. Warmer than average sea temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico contributed to its strong intensity. Second reason has to do with warm ocean currents like the Gulf Stream that bring warm water westward and northward into the Caribbean Sea, Gulf of Mexico, and into the Western Atlantic Basin. This creates a perfect breeding ground for hurricanes, especially off the east coast of the United States. During the peak of the Atlantic hurricane season, temperatures in the vicinity of the Gulf Stream are well into the 80s, fueling already strong Cape Verde hurricanes that formed off the west coast of Africa. In this region, areas most susceptible to direct hurricane strikes include North and South Carolina, which both geographically jut out into the Atlantic Ocean. Another unusual region that is prone to direct strikes is Long Island and New England, both of which also stick out. Usually, this area is most at risk in September, when ocean temperatures are at their warmest. The 1938 New England hurricane hit Long Island on September 21st as a Category 3 storm with sustained winds of 120 miles an hour. Also, the storm was moving at a speed of nearly 50 miles an hour to the north, so it still retained its strength as it went into New England. The Coriolis effect is another very important reason for hurricanes turning towards certain areas. The Coriolis effect is a phenomenon that results from the Earth's rotation. It causes moving objects, including air masses, ocean currents, and hurricanes, to be deflected or curved as they travel across the Earth's surface. This deflection occurs because different points of the Earth's surface are rotating at different speeds. Most Atlantic hurricanes form between 10 to 30 degrees north latitude. When a Cape Verde hurricane heads westward across the Atlantic Ocean, the Coriolis effect will make the storm start turning slowly west-northwestward and then northwestward. This is the primary reason why South America, 
Trinidad and Tobago, Grenada, and the ABC Islands of Aruba, Bonaire, and Curaçao really are struck by hurricanes, as they're all too far south. For northward and northwestward Caribbean islands, Mexico, and the United States, the Coriolis effect allows for these storms to be deflected there. This effect, plus the warm waters, allows for these regions to be particularly prone to hurricanes. One meteorological reason for hurricane-prone regions is atmospheric steering currents. For example, if there is a large high-pressure system parked over the eastern United States, a hurricane may be suppressed by that. Once it makes its way around the high pressure, the storm may ride around it and head northward. If the high-pressure system is in just the right area, this puts regions especially within the Gulf Coast states at risk. If the high-pressure system is further east in just the right area, it may put locations on the eastern seaboard at risk. And if the high-pressure system is too far east, the storm will be deflected away from land and be classified as a fish storm. In the future, will already hurricane-prone areas be more susceptible to enhanced risk? The combination of physical and human factors may exacerbate the situation. Let's start with the physical side. For one, climate change, both naturally and human-induced, is a possible culprit for more hurricanes. This year, ocean temperatures around Florida reached records, with widespread 90s and even a few measurements of 100. This 100-degree reading was likely taken in a small confined basin, but still, overall warmer waters can add more fuel to the fire. Warmer ocean temps may move further north into areas such as the Mid-Atlantic and New England, increasing the risk for hurricanes there. In the same subtropical and tropical areas, humidity levels may increase, and this would lead to an increase in another fuel hurricanes love. Warmer oceans and more humidity can create more atmospheric instability increasing the number of storms and their intensity. Although physical factors are a contributing influence, human aspects play a role too. The subtropical and tropical southeastern United States has grown in population significantly in the last five decades. In 1970, Florida had around 6.8 million residents. Today, the population is 22.2 million. In 1970, North Carolina had a population of nearly 5.1 million residents. Now it's at 10.7 million. And much of the growth for both states has been in coastal regions, especially in the Miami metropolitan area, which has 6.1 million residents today. Every year, new coastal condos and apartments are constructed here, and while many of them are built to withstand hurricanes, they can still become damaged. In addition, the Miami metropolitan area hasn't had a direct impact from a Category 5 hurricane since 1992 when Hurricane Andrew hit south of the area. The last bullseye impact was from the Great Miami Hurricane in 1926, which hit the city as a dangerous Category 4 storm. If the same storm were to happen today, it is estimated that it would cost around $235 billion in damage. Further north into the Carolinas, a direct Category 5 hurricane would cause billions of dollars in damage as well. And, in the Northeast, many major cities such as New York, Philadelphia, Boston, and Washington, D.C. are at future risk for increasing numbers of hurricanes and stronger intensities. 2012's Hurricane Sandy hit New Jersey directly and caused $70 billion in damage. The truth of the matter is that many people prefer to live in coastal areas over inland areas. The more people there are in coastally prone areas, the greater the risk becomes. Hurricanes are a force of nature that will continue to inflict prone regions, including the eastern U.S., Gulf Coast states, and the Caribbean. While geography plays a role in where hurricanes trend to, Meteorological changes play a role in what they will produce in the future. These physical factors are important to understand more about, but they may be extremely hard to prevent from happening or irreversible. Thus, humans may have to adapt to an ever-changing world. What do you think? If you would like to chime in, please do so in the comments section below. Thanks once again for watching this week's episode. Be sure to subscribe to my channel if you enjoy learning more about geography and earth science. Until next time!